how I currently feel. Like that's kind of everybody's just trying to get in our way today. Okay. Yeah. channel so I'm filming it in a new location today just because I want to start giving my background I want to give my videos especially for the summer a little bit more diversity when I'm sitting down and talking to you guys and also because I hung up my good old glorious James Dean skeleton who's being half cut off in the frame right now but I don't know I just like I like the thought of him watching down over us as we film my summer reading list because that is what this video is all about. If you guys are newer to my channel then you might not know this but I filmed this video last year and the year before. I'll link them down below or somewhere up on the screen. Recently fell off of the whole like reading bandwagon for a while there. I got super busy and with traveling and just all the different projects that I've been working on, reading kind of went on the back burner for a bit until I picked up Red Queen and then I, I blazed through that pretty quickly, finished that book on my Europe trip and then all of a sudden I'm addicted to it again. Like I just want to read all the time all over again. So I made myself a reading list. This time I was realistic about it and I gave myself six books, which is two bucks a month. And yeah, let's let's jump into it, shall we? So I picked out six books that I want to read this summer. Um, I'm going to give you guys some brief descriptions about them. They are all pretty pretty different and I'm also going to leave the links to them down below so definitely check that out. Uh, one of the first ones that I want to read and it's probably going to be the one that I start reading tonight is Girl Boss. The other night I came back from, where was I? My hometown I believe and it was really late. I drove home really late and I had like an hour before I wanted to go to bed. I was in one of those moods where I wanted to watch something new so I threw Girl Boss on, on Netflix and honestly I threw it on because so many of you guys have tweeted me being like you need to watch it, you need to watch it. it it's safe to say that I was instantly obsessed and I've already finished the whole season. All the OC references and like the 2006 like early 2000s references and oh my god it is just the most glorious show. And so it inspired me to pick up the book that the whole series is based off of. Girl Boss is actually like a really loose story, like a loose, a loosely truth story about the girl that created Nasty Gal, like the clothing line. And so I picked up the book because I really want to read the book as well. And just to tie me over until the second season of Girl Boss comes out, which I don't even know if that's been confirmed, but I'm confirming it because if they don't create a second season, I might not, I might not be all right with that. I'll read you guys like the blurb about the book. The first thing Sofia Amoruso sold online wasn't fashion. It was a stolen book. She spent her teens hitchhiking, committing petty theft and dumpster diving. By 22, she had resigned herself to employment but was still broke, directionless, and working a mediocre day job that she had taken for health insurance. It was there that Sophia decided to start selling vintage clothes on eBay. Eight years later, she is the founder, CEO, and creative director of Nasty Gal, a plus $100 million online fashion retailer with more than 350 employees. Sophia's never been a typical CEO or a typical anything, and she's a written girl boss for outsiders and insiders seeking a unique path to success. Even when that path is as winding as all hell and lined with naysayers. Girl Boss includes Sophia's story, yet it's infinitely better than Sophia. It's deeply personal yet universal, filled with brazen wake-up calls, cunning frank observations, and behind-the-scenes stories from Nasty Gal's meteoric rise. It proves that being successful isn't about how popular you were in high school or where you went to college, if you went to college. Rather, success is just about trusting your instincts, following your gut, and knowing which rules to follow and which rules to break. Expecting to be more obsessed with the book because I always tend to like books more than movies and shows anyway because I am a book snob that way. So yeah, that is number one on my summer reading list. The second book on my summer reading list is called The Problem With Forever. It is by Jennifer L. Armentrot. I probably butchered that name. I will read again the inside blurb so that this video isn't like ridiculously long of me just jabbering about things that are un, un, like unrelevant just like I am doing right now at this second. For some people, silence is a weapon. For Mallory Moose Dodge, it's a shield. Growing up, she learned the best way to survive was to say nothing. And even though it's been four years since her nightmare ended, she's beginning to worry that the fear that holds her back will last a lifetime. Now, after years of homeschooling with loving adoptive parents, Mallory must face a new milestone, spending her senior year at public high school. But of all the terrifying and exhilarating scenarios she's imagined, there's one she's never dreamed of, that she'd run into Ryder Stark, the friend and protector she hasn't seen since childhood on her very first day. It doesn't take long for Mallory to realize that the connection she shared with Ryder never really faded. Yet the deeper their bond grows, the more it becomes apparent that she's not the only one grappling with lingering scars from the path. And as she watches Ryder's life spin out of control, Mallory must make a choice between staying silent and speaking out for the people she loves, the life she wants, and the truth that needs to be heard. So, I mean, this book is definitely, like, it sounds like 
like it's about deep or personal things going on in your life but I, I kind of like books like that. I'm super geeky over teen fiction novels like the book I wrote is pretty much a teen fiction novel so this is totally my wheelhouse. I tried not to look at the reviews but it did have pretty good stars on Amazon Prime which I discovered recently. I am such a judge a book by its cover kind of gal and this it just screams it looks like summer you know what I mean it's colorful I feel like it should smell like coconut. Yeah, so that's the second book that's on my reading list. And third, as I mentioned, I recently read Red Queen and I finished it when I was on the plane over to Scotland. And it's so funny because I didn't get a chance to read this on the trip, but I actually brought this with me on the trip and Alana brought the exact same book and we did not know we were even reading the same series. So it was really funny. This is just Glass Sword. This is the second book to Red Queen. Um, Red Queen is really good. I find it's a bit of a combination of like the selection series and like Hunger Games a little bit. I, I prefer the selection series. I prefer the the author that wrote the selection series. I prefer her form of writing. That said though, like once I start a series, I have to finish it. Also just because I want to know what's going to happen. Like I need to know what goes on with the characters. I get so intertwined with like what happens next or who ends up with who or like what if I really connect to the character like where their personal growth ends up going and so it can be a little choppy and a little all over the place but I just really love the characters in this book and then in this series so I picked up the second one it's about how like there is kind of a divide within the world where people have silver blood or people have red blood and if you're red blood you're like considered kind of like the peasants and if you have silver blood you're considered more royalty so definitely check out um the red queen if you haven't already this is the second one to that and it's on my summer reading list which i feel like i should probably stop saying because you probably know that by now so the next book on my summer reading list is called leave your mark it is by Eliza Lich. So one, the cover, pretty freaking cute. This one's not like a fiction. This one is more of like a motivational book. Obsessed with my motivational books, like You Are a Badass, The Subtle Art. And so this one, Leave Your Mark, it's about landing your dream job, killing it in your career, and rocking social media. Yeah, I know, I'm a huge nerd. That's okay, I embrace it. I love this kind of crap. Give you guys a little bit of an insight to what it's about. Leave Your Mark isn't an advice book. It's a mentorship in 288 pages. Aliza is a social media superstar. She's the voice behind the wildly popular DKNY PR girl Twitter feed that now boasts over half a million followers. Known for her chatty and intimate tone, she has also become beloved for her top-notch career advice and her enthusiasm for mentoring. Now in her first book, Eliza is here to tell her story complete with the Devil Wears Prada-esque moments and insider secrets. Drawing invaluable lessons from her experience as a top fashion publicist, Lit shares advice, inspiration, and a healthy dose of real talk in Leave Your Mark. She delivers personal and professional guidance for people who are just starting their careers and for people who are well on their way. With particular emphasis on communicating and building your personal brand, Eliza is your sassy knowledgeable guide to contemporary working world where personal and professional lines are blurred and the most important thing you can have is a strong sense of self. This is a good one to pick up if you guys are wanting to like become YouTubers or work in social media or anything like that or if you already are. Like, I'm, already, I'm already doing this stuff but I love learning more about it. I love hearing like other people's perspectives of it. I'm a bit of an introvert and I love the friendships that I have where we get to talk about this kind of stuff but that's not every single friendship or every single relationship that I have in my life so reading these types of books especially about the types of things that I'm kind of working in or about social media and about all the things that I get super geeky and super nerdy over is so fun because it's it's beneficial it's helpful and I'm allowed to like geek out over it without boring the crap out of anyone I just love reading about like it's kind of like with girl boss where I love reading books about girls in the world that are just slaying the game you know what I mean killing it and then writing books to tell other people how to kill it I just think that that's awesome freaking girl power let's move on my next one on my list and I'm pretty sure it's so funny I think this may have been on my one of my last summer reading lists or maybe even my fall one but I never got around to reading it and it is the to all the boys I've loved before by Jenny Han total geeky like 13 year old girl teen fiction so up my alley though and if you guys are wondering what it's about it says when I write, I hold nothing back. I write like he'll never read it because he never will. Every secret thought, every careful observation, everything I've saved up inside of me, I put it all in a letter. And when I'm done, I seal it, I address it, and then I put it in my teal hat box. Oh my god, I'm so lame. <laughs> They're not love letters in the strictest sense of the word. My letters are for when I don't want to be in love anymore. They're for the goodbye. 
because after I write thy letter, I'm no longer consumed my, by my all-consuming love. I can eat my cereal and not wonder if he likes bananas over his Cheerios too. I can sing along the love songs and not be singing them to him. If love is a possession, maybe my letters are like the exorcisms. God, I love that. My letters set me free, or at least they're supposed to. And then basically what, like, I'm not ruining it, it says it on the inside, but there's a day that all of her secret love letters get mailed. I don't know how she has fallen in love with so many people in her short young life, but it sounds really cool. There's a sappy, love-obsessed little teen still inside of me, and so that is why I love reading these kinds of books. This is like the lightest read. This is one of those ones that I don't have to be like, super consumed by so when when this summer if things ever get really really busy or if I'm traveling a lot and I just want something to bring with me to like kind of read lightly this will be my gal you know and as for book number six I've read this book before I've talked about it on my channel before but not for a while um, I want to reread The Four Agreements this is a book that I read when I went to Dominican like two years ago just over two years ago I loved everything I talked about I loved hearing about like the Toltec path and like all of those types of things uh, it, it's a little bit different than my usual like motivational like girl boss kind of books but this one is more about like your spirituality and and how like the universe it's about it's a little bit more it's a little bit more hippie so it's by Don Miguel Ruse and the four agreements themselves are like be impeccable with your word don't take anything personally don't make assumptions and always do your best and it goes into depth about those four um agreements and how like abiding by those four agreements can change your life and make you like a more like filled with more light and more love so it's a little different than everything else in my reading list and I have read it before, but it's so not fresh in my memory anymore. And I just remember when I finished reading this, it, it was like something shifted in me and I felt so connected to the world. And, and I'm kind of lacking in that a little bit lately. I feel like I'm, I'm very in touch with a lot of things going on in my life, but something that I want to get back into is feeling a little bit more in touch with my spiritual side. I, I've lost a little bit of that in the last year, I would say. As much as I love my like you know, own it, kill it, go after it kind of side. I also love my peaceful, like, spiritual side, and I want to nourish that a little bit more, as lame as that sounds. That is why this is the sixth book on my reading list for this summer. This whole video is pretty much me openly admitting how geeky I am. It's okay. Embrace your weird, you know? So thus concludes my summer reading list. Those are the six books that I have so far. If I end up updating them, you guys will know on Twitter. I tend to tweet out when I'm reading a new book, which I plan on doing tonight because Girl Boss is going to be the first one that I begin with. Let me know down below what books you're loving lately or what books you might have on your summer reading list because I'm always adding like want to reads to my Goodreads, which I will also link down below. So many links down below. And other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and geeking out with me for a solid God knows how long this video is. And I will see all of you guys in my next video. Bye guys.